Comrades, you have heard already about this strange dream I had last night. But I will come to the dream later. I have something else to say first. I do not think, comrades, that I shall be with you for many months longer. And before I die, I feel it my duty to pass on to you, pass on to you such wisdom as I have acquired. I have had a long life. I have had, had much time for thought. as I lay alone in my stall. And I think I may say that I understand the nature of life on this earth, as well as any animal now living. It is about this that I wish to speak to you. Now comrades, what is the nature of life of ours? But let's face it, our lives are miserable, laborious and short. We are born and we are given just so much food as will keep the breath in our bodies. And those of us who are capable of it are forced to work to the last atom of our strength. In the very instance that our usefulness has come to an end, we are slaughtered with hideous cruelty. No animal in England knows the meaning of happiness or leisure after he is a year old. No animal is free. The life of an animal is misery and slavery. This is the plain truth. Reading from George Orwell, Animal Farm. My name is Marcus Conti. I'm an investigative journalist, YouTube reporter, sole plaintiff in Conti vs. DSNY. Good morning. It's March 27, 2017, 2018. <laughs> and um, I try to stay out of the wind right now. Found a nice little spot over there. Uh, so anyway, that reading is from Animal Farm, and I wanted to. Um, I'm gonna stay over here where it's not windy. I want to talk to you about this. So that's a reading that was Major the Pig, right? In Animal Farm, in the beginning there on Jones's farm, and some of the, the smarter or I don't know more aware awake animals on the farm realize that they look up one day and they realize they're fucking slaves that 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 they'll never have a leisurely day in their lives you know and um, that they're working for that they're working for they're, they're working for something that never transpires there's actually another page on that I wanted to I think I stopped reading too soon. I'll keep continuing. But they work for something that never manifests. Because it's taken from them. The second second wealth is accumulated. Right? Here, he goes on to say, But is this, is this simply part of the order of nature? Is it because the, this land of ours is so poor that it cannot afford a decent life to those who dwell upon it? No, comrades, a thousand times no. The soil of England is fertile. Its climate is good. It is capable of affording food in abundance to enormously greater number of animals than it now inhibits. This single farm of ours would support a, a, dozens of horses. Excuse me. A single farm of will support dozens of horses, 20 cows, hundreds of sheep, and all of them living in comfort and dignity that are now almost beyond our imagination. Why then do we continue in this miserable condition? Because nearly the whole of the product of our labor, the produce of our labor, is stolen from us by humans. Their comrades is the answer to all our problems. It is summed up in a single word, man. Man is the only real enemy we have. Remove man from the scene, and the root cause of hunger, overwork, hunger and overwork, is abolished forever. Look, Orwell is using, I, I keep pounding away Animal Farm, because Orwell is using, he's using animals as an example on the farm. 
Jones is foreign, but but we are America, United States, and the West right now is in fact is in fact Jones's farm, right? When all the wealth goes to the top, like Jones, Jones may have had a hundred animals, but he was still one person, right? So that's about that's about right, the one percent, right? One percent of all. All of the wealth is getting funneled to the top, right? And why do we tolerate it, right? Why do we tolerate it? We're manipulated to think that if we work harder and faster and stronger and longer hours, that someday, 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 we'll be allowed to have leisure will be afforded a better life, a, a time where where things will be better in the future at some point. But the fact is the day never comes, right? Right? Now, my, is this a doomsday prophet, a prophecy? No. It's, uh, what, what, what Orwell is pointing out is a simple, is a simple fact of human nature, which is greed, right? In this country, where you're seeing you're seeing an, an, all the wealth controlled by very very few people, right? And the the other thing I wanted to point out about that that piece, I'm just look. This is crowdsourcing. You, I want your opinions. Thank you very much, everybody who shares uh, in the comments. I read all of them. I don't always comment on them, but I read all of them. I put a little uh, heart <laughs> that tells you that I read your comment. And um, but most importantly, what what the what the reading let's get duck in here, get out of the woods. Most importantly, what the uh, what the reading suggests is that is that the enemy is not is not the guy next to you. It's not the 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 racist black the racist blacks who think that their problems stem from the white man or the racist white who thinks you know blacks and Mexicans and Hispanics are taking his job and his his opportunity or the gay community who thinks straight people are discriminating against him or the, the, the handicapped community who thinks that the people with, with legs are discriminating against them. And on and on and on. It's race, it's, it's sex, what you're doing in your bedroom. It's, uh, you know, it's age, right? None of these things are the problem. That's the point. You could know all about the markets and and, and, and go to 90 different colleges and have more degrees than a thermometer. And the fact is that the, the ruling class in this country is the problem. It's not guns. It's not discrimination. It's not racism. It's not ethnicity. It's not citizenship. It's not a fucking wall that needs to be built around the country. It's the people that are controlling the wealth Right? That buy the politicians. That own the politicians. Right? That's the problem. Right? It's the ruling elite that pay off the politicians. Surround the politicians with 20 different lobbyists. Right? Pay them off. When you want something done in Washington, you gotta write a letter. Right? You gotta get on a train, go to Washington, stand outside with a fucking picket sign, right? And hope that one of the congressmen sees you out the window. Goldman Sachs sends six six attorneys, puts them up in a hotel, maybe Trump Plaza across the street, right? They live in large, two weeks, three weeks, sipping champagne, you know, mimosas in the morning, and and chasing politicians around Washington D.C., buying them shit, giving them trips to Florida, getting hookers, uh, you know, suck there, you know what I mean, right? It's it, the game is rigged. That's what I'm saying. And then what do they get out of all that? What do they get? What do they want? They want a little law change so that they, they, they'll spend, you know, $5 million to get these, these, these lawyers 
with their bribe money in their pocket to, to, to manipulate one little law so that they could make bil a, a, another billion dollars or do something that was formerly illegal and change it so that it's now legal, right? That's what we're up against, right? That's what we're up against. We're up against a ruling class that has totally, uh, you know, obstructed our way of life. It's treasonous. Yes, it is treason, right? The politicians that take the money, right? They take the money, right? They t it's bribes, right? This is the real problem. We have to stop fighting amongst, our, uh, amongst each other, right? The other prophecy in, the, in that reading is that Major was actually one of the pigs that he spoke eloquent, eloquent, eloquent with, <laughs> eloquently, I can't even say the word. He spoke very nicely and inspired his people, right? He inspired his people to rise up, right? And then when he, when he was in charge, he sided with the humans. We're going to get to that part in the story, right? So he was one of them, and then one of them sided with the with the corrupt human, the corrupt other side, the ruling class, right? He's the politician. He rises up, and then he and then he feels it's that that he's above the the fray, that he's more entitled, right? Right, that's what we're up against, right? So we have to watch our leaders. We have to keep our leaders in check, right? Peace out.